Hello guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be having a little look at the English tech tree in Age of Empires 4. I'm going to explain to you how this differs to every other save. But before we dive in, I just want to add that you can find in the description an affiliate link to buy Age of Empires 4. And it's generally a lot cheaper than you would get it from Steam. And it's a good way to help support the Morley Games channel. But now we've got that out of the way, let's dive in. So looking at the English in Age of Empires 4, they're described as a one-star difficulty civilization and they have a focus on the defense, longbows and economy. And as a quick summary of the English, they have exceptional early infantry, provide the English with a powerful punch backed up by reliable food production from the fields. And they have various civilization characteristics or civ bonuses, such as network of castles. So this one, it describes as protect the frontier with town centers outpost towers and keeps that increase the attack speed of nearby units when invaders are detected they also have island of agriculture build farms for 50% less wood and have increased efficiency within the influence of a mill they also have defensive birig birig <laughs> anyway Keep watch yours with the vanguard man at arms heavy infantry in the dark age villagers fight with bows rather than farm implements and town centers fire twice as many arrows as normal at nearby enemies it'll be quite hard doing some raiding and then just looking at the overall summary of the civ bonuses as we already uh, mentioned that the farms are 50 percent less wood and gather food 15 percent faster when they're near the mill you can get the Vanguard Man at Arms in the Dark Age, which you can then also get uh, Man at Arms in the Feudal Age as well, so an upgraded version. And uh, most other Sibs won't get a Man at Arms until the Castle Age, so really strong bonus there. They have stronger villagers who wield short bows. Town centres, outposts, towers, and keeps provide the network of castles bonus, which gives 25% attack speed to all effective units. Town centers fire twice as many arrows and military ships have a plus one range. They also have influence. So again, it's kind of duplicate from what we've just spoken about, but farms built within the influence of a mill gain 15% faster speed. And their unique unit is the longbowman. Essentially, the longbowman replaces the archer that all the sieves get, uh, but this has a longer range that can deploy defensive palings, making them more effective against cavalry. So. Defensive palings are effectively stakes in the ground that the cavalry will run into. Causes them a stun effect for about two and a half seconds and I believe there's a little bit of damage dealt to them as well. So just moving on to how the actual tech tree is different for the English. First we're going to have a look at the mill. So the mill is exactly the same as everybody else apart from it has enclosures as a unique tech for the English. So each farm enclosure being worked by a villager generates plus one gold every three and a half seconds. So this is an imperial age technology that you can research at the mill. Moving on from there there are some differences within the barracks as we've already mentioned the vanguard man at arms can be produced in the dark age and upgraded to early man at arms in the feudal age. Now Holy Roman Empire get our early men at arms, but they don't get the Vanguard men at arms. And everybody else just gets the men at arms at the Castle Age, so quite a good uh, bonus there. Now, looking at the Vanguard men at arms, they are tough infantry with good damage. They have high armor, but they move very slowly. Now, if you were to attack an enemy with the Vanguard men at arms, certainly within the Dark Age or the Feudal Age, they'd have a tough time dealing with them because certainly archers are pretty weak against armored units. They also have a unique tech which they can get in the castle age, which is armor clad. But this increases the ranged and melee armor of men at arms by plus two. So it gives them an extra two armor compared to everybody else, which is fantastic. They're gonna be quite tanky. Moving on from there, we'll have the dock. Now there's only one extra technology within the dock and that is shipwrights. So again, this is a unique tech for the English and this reduces the cost of ships by minus 10%. So that on top of the plus one range that they get as a sieve bonus, they're certainly gonna be quite a good naval sieve. Moving on from there, we have the archery range. So the archery range only differs by the fact that normal archers have been replaced by longbowmen as i already mentioned earlier so they are cheap long-ranged infantry with good damage versus unarmored targets so not very good against armored targets so 
they'll be pretty bad against any mana arms or feudal age knights that you might get from other civs but they do have a long range and they can construct the palings to fend off cavalry charges so they do get two unique technologies this one is setup camp which you can research in the feudal age this gives the longbowmen the ability to set up camp which heals them for one health every one second so quite a nice little bonus that they can use or an ability that they can use whilst they're out in the field which could be really really great for maintaining your army numbers and then the final technology within the archery range is arrow volley which is an imperial age technology and this gives the longbowmen an ability that can be activated then it increases their attack speed by plus 70 percent that could be quite a good ability i don't it doesn't specify how long the ability lasts for but we'll see how that one pans out moving on from there the next variance within the tech trees within the keep and this is a unique technology which is network of citadels so this increases the network of castles attack speed bonus from plus 25 percent to plus 50 percent so we do have that civ bonus of network of castles which increases the attack speed this technology will increase it even further so certainly if you've got those longbowmen who are within the circle of influence of this network of castles they're already getting the plus 50 percent when you've researched this technology and then they've got that ability for the attack speed to go even further at plus 70 percent they're going to be really really strong it's almost going to be like machine gun so moving on from there we have the siege workshop now this is pretty much the same however the english get this one as well which is called the ribaldikin I think I've butchered that pronunciation probably, but the Ribaldikin, I don't know. I'm sure if someone can correct me in the comments. Now this one isn't specifically unique for the English as I've already mentioned. There's probably another sieve that gets it. Uh, but this one's a five barreled gunpowder weapon effective against massed units and deals little damage to buildings. Uh, so we can hit multiple targets in a single volley. It, it's got a short range and it's got low ranged armor. So certainly going to be uh, dealing perhaps an area of effect damage there. And that is essentially all of the differences within the tech tree that you would get from the generic tech tree. But before we finish, we're going to have a little look at all of the age up buildings for the English. So to progress from the Dark Age to the Feudal Age, you get a choice of building one of two buildings. First of all, we have the Abbey of the Kings. This is described as a religious landmark. So it heals all nearby friendly units that are out of combat by plus four every one and a half seconds. So if you're in the middle of a fight, it won't heal you, but you'll have to run away and heal up a little bit. And then the next one is the Council Hall, which is described as a military landmark. This uh, essentially allows you to produce longbowmen. However, they are produced at plus 100% speed from this landmark. And you can also get those unique technologies from there as well for the longbowmen. Moving on from there, we have the Age 3 buildings. So these are the ones to progress from the Feudal Age to the Castle Age. Starting off, we've got the King's Palace. This one acts as a town centre with all the behaviours, technology units, bonuses of a town centre. So it's essentially a town centre. An expensive town centre, but it's a town centre. Uh, which is really good because it does mean that you don't have to uh, start mining stone early. You can just get this and you're there with another town centre. So town centres are generally quite expensive. Uh, you can build them in the feudal age, but they are quite expensive. So it might just be worth getting one of these. And then the next building is the White Tower, where this one acts as a keep with all the behaviours, technology and bonuses. So essentially it's a keep, works like a keep, looks like a keep, has all the uh, text and stuff in there and you can upgrade it. So if you're planning on going for that defensive sort of network of castles type strategy, I mean you can use them uh, offensively as well, but certainly from a defensive point of view, if you've got your town centres that fire twice as far, you've got these uh, defensive landmarks in your town it's going to be ridiculously hard to actually come and raid your base so it certainly might be worth getting one of these and perhaps even adding some towers in as well and then finally to advance from the castle age to the imperial age you get two choices again so we have the Berkshire Palace. This acts again as a keep, but this one's a little bit better this time. It has plus 50% greater weapon range and double the number of arrow slits. So not only does it shoot further, 
It also causes more damage because it's got more arrows or cannons or whatever else you uh, decide to upgrade it with. So again, a fantastic building to have as a defensive building. And then the other choice is the Wingard Palace. And this one produces the Wingard Army from the landmark. Army includes one of each man at arms, spearman, longbowman, knight and trebuchet. To produce the Wingard Army, it will cost you 100 food, 100 wood and 200 gold, which is pretty cheap when you add up all the individual costs of all those units together. But that's it for this one, guys. Thank you very much for stopping by and watching the video. On the end screen now, there is a playlist for all of the tech tree guides, including the generic standard tech tree that you can have a little look at in more depth. So I shall see you on the next one.